ki khubor ka bate si tv lawan rashafi da ka frank motors booking open for the new nexon visit frank motors or call 7045207973 Umenti Rangba Jangka Jilla U Konrad Konkel Sangma Ulo Amba Ka Sorkar Kan Krishan Borba Yekinong Rep Jangka Nige Jilla Yakani Umenti Rangba Ulo Pin Pau Habakran Haka Dor Barba Jangka Nong Rep Lani Ka Mikhalia Farmers Parliament Kabla Long Ha State Convention Center Shilong Haka Nige Sengi Umenti Rangba Ulo Pelat Pai Baru Yaka Regeneration Mikhalia Project Program Lingba ka ni ka dor bar ba ka ban sakut ha ka santri kuno pra araja ar pulai ka thong jong ka sarkar ka long ban ple lat ya ki nong rep na keleng ka jilla ba ki ni sam ya ki jing tip ba ban sngap ru i ki jing e ba ki ya kan do ha ka rep ka riang ha ka ni ka dor bar ba le ya shim ban talang na ka mentri jong ka rep ka riang ka sarkar jilla ka doktor amprin lingdo u mentri ka tran animal husbandry and veterinary department u ba alexander lalu heng ke sekretari jangka tenat kerap karyang ke kong isawan dan lalu bagi nong rap dan keleng ke jelah. It's a very important day for the state of Meghalaya, particularly because this is a special day dedicated to farmers. We are calling today the Farmers Day Celebration Day. Today we start the third farmers parliament. This farmer parliament had started in 2019 and uh, over the years it seems to have grown in its uh, extent and its reach especially to farmers participation. Today we have uh, experts from across the globe. We have partners from within uh, the country We have um, engaged actively uh, through various uh, measures. Today they will be having their first round of discussions which will then wind up tomorrow. Uh, we feel that this farmers uh, parliament is important because farmers need firstly to be given a platform to talk about their problems but more importantly they need a platform to be able to understand the demands of modern farming when we talk about modern farming we not necessarily only discuss technological interventions and improvisations but we set the mindset of farmers on looking at climate change as the biggest challenge inculcating good practices in farmers who will resort to farming as a lucrative practice with business interest but we also look at the same guarding of the environment along the same side so we are going to be looking at these two major major discussions in the two day parliament and we thank the honorable chief minister for his intervention his leadership his wisdom in giving this platform for farmers to discuss all of the issues as indicated this is uh, one day where we dedicate uh, uh, to the farmers of our state and um, it is done primarily because we felt that there was a uh, need to give special attention uh, by recognizing them by motivating them by supporting them and holding them and whereas many programs are going on across the board uh, different mission mode programs different financial incentives different trainings uh, different technological interventions uh, so while all of this is happening uh, we felt that there should be one day dedicated to the farmers in the form of a farmers day come a farmers parliament so it's really a day of celebration uh of course it's an opportunity as mentioned uh, by the honorable minister for the farmers to bring out uh, different concerns and issues also and at the at the same time it is also a platform where the farmers uh, can discuss about how to improve uh, things in the future the challenges that may be there in the coming decades not just currently now and uh, really set the tone for the right uh, ecosystem 
so that uh, the farmers can prosper and really move forward uh, in life. So uh, there are many challenges and uh, of course there are many many difficulties which we faced and which we will continue to face but uh, if we are all together and we work together as a team and uh, we support each other I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to overcome those challenges and uh, take things forward. So it's really a very great day and I thank uh, the Meghalaya Farmers Commission, uh, the Hill Farmers Union and of course the Agriculture Department and the Honourable Minister and also our uh, Animal Husbandry and Veterinary Department Minister, Mr. A.L. Heck, for all their interventions and their support to ensure that we are able to take up the interest of the farmers in our state. Yeah, there are multiple ways. I think the Honourable Minister will be able to reply in much more detail. But I can just share with you that apart from these regulated or so-called regulated market that you have mentioned, uh, we have come out with a large number of farmers markets. So we are now setting up farmers markets in different places where we are allowing the farmers to have their own associations and uh, run these markets uh, in their own terms and conditions so that nobody else will come in and uh, kind of take uh, advantage in some way or the other of the situation. And the farmers will be given full power as well as authority uh, to be able to manage and run the uh, markets uh, uh, as, as uh, they feel correct. So there is a massive step towards that uh, that we are doing and we will continue to expand these farmers markets. Some of them are already functional and uh, some of them we will uh, make them functional soon. So uh, these kind of steps are being taken to ensure that there are more options that are now available to the farmers. Uh, marketing concepts of the modern generation have also changed. Today you are looking at markets where connection with farmers is more relevant for sale of a product rather than uh, going to a conventional regulated market. In a regulated market you have other kinds of producers and products which uh, likely have short shelf life. Here we are looking at connecting farmers to international marts. You just saw we attended the World Food Mart. There we have a very good intervention. We have several other such markets which are happening online, which the department again is hand-holding the farmers to market their, their producers globally. We also have several other markets in different states, these marts and these conferences and these uh, showcasing of our products. <coughs> Next, there will be a Hyderabad meet. Then there will be other meets. So these are uh, new concepts of marketing. You don't have to really see a wholesale retail market. A wholesale retail market in <coughs> its uh, previous concept would mean allowing farmers to take uh, non-perishable items to, 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 to go downs in a located designated place. But things are changing and our market, our farmers are becoming very smart. They're very familiar with all of their, their, their uh, marketing connections. And uh, government, uh, in the intervention of the Orange Chief Minister, is doing all the right things, making sure that we connect our farmers globally, making sure that we also prepare the presentation of our producers efficiently, and GI tagging, which the Orbit Chief Minister has just spoken, is one international certification for marketing of our products. Uh, like the Kasi Mandarin and some other fruits that are there, uh, we have now gone for uh, a GI tagging. As I said, we've just got for Lakaton. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the future, uh, all the indigenous uh, products that we have, the fruits and the vegetables that are specific to our state, uh, we have examined all. I don't have the entire list with me right now, but we can provide that later on. Uh, but we are trying to ensure that uh, all of these uh, uh, backlogs, I should say, or things should have been done some time back. We had started the process, as I said, for Lakarong Turmeric about four years back. And we're very happy that now the Lakadong turmeric has a GI tag, and which makes it now unique, which means that it is specific to our region. Uh, the value of the product goes up, and uh, it helps us in overall marketing the product at a global level. So we will continue to do the exercise for many, many of our local products.
What about Khasi Mandarin Orange? <coughs> it is, it is uh, already tied. Yeah. So uh, the mega food park, uh, the process, in fact, uh, some of the implementation of the different projects is going on, uh, and uh, but it is not yet complete. Uh, so definitely, we will look into doing that. But apart from the mega projects or the mega project that is there, uh, we are now uh, also trying to parallelly have uh, different kind of processing units which are not mega product projects in nature. So decentralized models where we have location specific uh, infrastructures so that uh, the farmers can uh, then have access to these processing units is also being done. So you'll see uh, as we move along we have recently sanctioned uh, uh, funds for uh, processing say for example rubber. So Garo Hills is a large rubber plantation but there was no processing plant out there. So along with some of the different organizations that are very active in this, we have started investing and putting up rubber processing units. So likewise, depending on the region and the areas, we would like to set up different units and different units are being set up uh, you know, in a decentralized model. We are, uh, in fact, uh, the, the DPR for that particular museum is being prepared as we speak. Uh, the land and the location is uh, uh, has been identified in Upper Shillong site and it will not just be a museum. The idea and the concept is to have a museum come, a uh, conference and a research centre where we will have different programmes on climate change of different stakeholders coming and discussing this important matter and children then being also uh, you know, uh, given the necessary sensitization about different aspects of, uh, of climate change. So we hope that this will not just be a museum, but museum is a very narrow word, but it will really be a research center, a conference uh, center, uh, a hub, which will then attract different uh, aspects of climate change uh, in the years to come. By when are you uh, planning to come? Uh, we hope that we should be able to start the work by early next year. Uh, but as I said, the DPR is still being prepared because it was prepared, but I changed it a bit because I wanted some more additions. As I said, I want conferences, I wanted places for people to stay so that, you know, children can come in, conferences can be held and in that conference area, you know, different uh, facilities are required. So some changes have been made. So we hope that early next year or mid next year, we should be able to start the work. So all I can say is that uh, there are these problems and these challenges. We don't deny that. And, uh, but it is exactly to resolve problems like what you have said, uh, that we have come out with what we call the Farmers Commission. And that's the reason why we are having this Farmers Parliament, because we felt that there was somewhere a communication gap between what the farmers needed and their problems were, and what the government and the officials and the political leaders were doing. And hence, all problems cannot be solved in one go. But I think the process has started now. There is a certain sense of direction there's a certain positive mood among the farmers and the officials and I hope that in the coming days, years and months and years that we will slowly and steadily be able to overcome these challenges and yes we will continue to motivate and guide the officials so that we can do better uh, and use the funds that are coming in at the right time uh, in the most efficient.